Welcome to our Chinese Finance and Economy Briefing show, where we dive into the latest happenings in the world of Chinese finance and economy with a dash of humor and a pinch of insight. Today, we're unpacking three fascinating stories that are shaping the economic landscape in China. First up, we're taking a ride into the future with China's autonomous driving sector. Despite heavy investments, companies are hitting speed bumps on the road to profitability, with giants like Alibaba and Baidu steering through challenges to monetize their self-driving dreams. Then, we're switching gears to explore the roller coaster world of Chinese stocks. Investors are playing a waiting game, looking for signs of stability amidst policy changes and a shaky housing market, while some are finding creative ways to stay invested in China's recovery narrative. Lastly, we're zooming in on China's workforce, where a pivot towards technological innovation demands a new breed of skilled workers. The country is looking to revamp its education system to meet the evolving demands of its economy, drawing inspiration from models like Germany's dual education system. So, buckle up as we navigate through these intriguing developments in China's finance and economy landscape. Stay tuned for the detailed content. In the bustling world of technological innovation and economic shifts, China finds itself at the forefront of several pivotal changes, yet not without its share of challenges. From the ambitious strides in autonomous driving to the fluctuating fortunes of its stock market, and the pressing need for a skilled workforce to sustain its economic pivot, the landscape is as dynamic as it is uncertain. The Road to Autonomous Driving, a Rocky Path The vision of autonomous driving in China, as reported by the South China Morning Post, seems to be caught in a whirlwind of high hopes and hard realities. Major players in the sector, ranging from tech giants to spirited startups, are finding the journey towards profitability tougher than anticipated. Bonma Network Technologies, an intelligent vehicle startup with the backing of Alibaba, found itself in a position where a change in leadership seemed necessary to rejuvenate its strategy towards commercialization. Similarly, Baidu's Apollo, an open-source autonomous driving platform, despite its technological advancements, has yet to find a profitable path. This situation is not isolated to the big names, smaller domestic companies are facing similar monetization challenges. This struggle is especially stark when contrasted with the booming electric vehicle sector in China, highlighting a peculiar divergence in the country's automotive industry success stories. Investor Chaotian, navigating Chinese stocks. Investors looking towards Chinese stocks are met with a landscape marked by uncertainty and volatility, as noted by the South China Morning Post. The mixed signals emanating from policy changes and a troubled housing market have led to a cautious stance among investors. Experts from Deutsche Bank and Lombard Odier suggest that Chinese stocks might be a story of the second half, indicating a potential future recovery but acknowledging the current hesitation among the investment community. The search for policy clarity and stable economic indicators remains a priority for those looking to dive back into the market. Meanwhile, some investors are finding solace in offshore assets, serving as proxies to stay connected with China's economic recovery narrative without directly braving the tumultuous waters of its stock market. Skilling up for the future. As China pivots towards a future driven by technological advancement and innovation, the need for a skilled workforce has never been more critical. Nikkei Asia highlights the gap between the current educational outputs and the industry requirements that China's economic transformation demands. The country is urged to reform its educational system to better align with the practical skills and industry-specific knowledge needed in the modern workforce. Drawing inspiration from the German model, which effectively integrates practical training with theoretical knowledge, could provide a roadmap for China. Private enterprises are expected to play a significant role in this transition, given their agility and responsiveness to market demands. They are the ones at the forefront of integrating cutting-edge technologies that necessitate new skills. Moreover, as China forges ahead, the importance of not just economic progress but sustainable development is emphasized. Training workers in sustainable practices and environmental management becomes paramount to ensure that China's growth does not come at the expense of the planet's health. In summary, China's journey across sectors such as autonomous driving, stock market investment, and workforce development encapsulates the complexities of navigating through technological innovation, economic uncertainties, and the imperative of sustainability. Each sector presents its own set of challenges and opportunities, painting a picture of a nation at a critical juncture of its developmental trajectory. How China addresses these challenges and leverages its opportunities will undoubtedly have profound implications not just for its own future, but for the global economy and environment as well. In the intricate web of global trade and technology, tensions between the United States and China continue to evolve, transcending the realm of mere tariffs and touching upon deeper issues such as overcapacity, particularly in cutting-edge sectors like electric vehicles. According to The Diplomat, 
This overcapacity is not just a matter of economic surplus but a strategic maneuver by China, perceived by the US as a threat to global market stability and its own economic security. China defends its stance by highlighting overcapacity as a crucial step towards becoming an innovation-led economy, necessary for its developmental ambitions. The friction points to an urgent need for both nations to engage constructively, possibly through bilateral or multilateral agreements aimed at fostering sustainable trade practices and technological cooperation. Amidst these geopolitical undercurrents, the realm of education technology presents an intriguing narrative of Chinese innovation making significant inroads into the U.S. market. The South China Morning Post reports the rising popularity of AI-powered study apps like Goth, developed by ByteDance subsidiary Goth Tech, which has become the second most downloaded education app in the U.S. This comes despite the political controversies surrounding Chinese tech firms in the U.S., including ByteDance's own TikTok, and Beijing's crackdown on the edtech sector within China. Goth, alongside another app named Question.ai, demonstrates the potential for Chinese tech advancements to gain a foothold in the U.S., even as their parent companies navigate a complex web of regulatory and political challenges. The automotive sector, particularly electric vehicles, EVs, is another arena where Chinese companies are making bold moves on the global stage. The South China Morning Post highlights the strategic shifts of Chinese EV makers like Dongfeng Motor and Cherry Automobile, who are eyeing the establishment of manufacturing bases in Europe. This move is partly a response to the escalating competition within China's domestic market and looming EU tariffs that threaten to make Chinese-made EVs less competitive. Dongfeng's discussions with the Italian government and Cherry's plans for a factory in Barcelona underscore a broader trend of Chinese firms seeking to circumvent trade barriers and tap into the lucrative European market. This strategic expansion is not limited to traditional car manufacturers, BYD, the world's largest EV maker, is also planning to set up a plant in Hungary, signaling a significant shift in the global automotive landscape and the US becomes ever more apparent, not just for the sake of bilateral relations but for the stability and prosperity of the global economy. In a world where the dynamics of international trade and technology are constantly shifting, recent developments have highlighted the intricate dance of global economic relations, with Germany and China taking center stage in a narrative of partnership and rivalry. As reported by Deutsche Welle, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz's trip to China, accompanied by the CEOs of some of Germany's most significant companies, underscores the complex relationship between the two economic powerhouses. The German government has aptly described China as a partner, systemic rival, and competitor, a nuanced characterization that captures the multifaceted nature of their interactions. Scholz's visit is not just a diplomatic formality but a strategic maneuver aimed at advocating for a fairer business environment while acknowledging China's pivotal role in the global economy. This delicate balancing act is emblematic of the broader challenges faced by nations seeking to navigate the choppy waters of international trade relations. In another corner of the world, a legal battle between Chinese walkie-talkie manufacturer Hitera Communications and its American rival Motorola Solutions has underscored the complexities of global trade disputes. As reported by the South China Morning Post, a U.S. court's decision to temporarily lift an injunction against Hitera, allowing it to resume global sales and distribution of its two-way radio products, marks a significant moment in the ongoing trade secrets dispute. This development not only impacts the two companies involved but also highlights the broader implications of legal battles on international business operations. Hitera's commitment to working closely with global partners to resume normal business activities reflects the resilience and adaptability required to thrive in the face of legal and regulatory challenges. The shifting sands of the global economy are also evident in the broader Asian market, where technology stocks and currency fluctuations are drawing keen attention. According to another report by the South China Morning Post, Asia is on the cusp of witnessing its first year-on-year -year profit growth in eight quarters with a predicted earnings per share increase of 4.1% for the quarter ending in March. This anticipated growth, led by technology stocks and a turnaround in utilities, highlights the region's dynamic economic landscape. Moreover, the depreciation of the yen and the search for new market winners in India underscore the diverse factors at play in shaping Asia's financial future. Investors are keenly watching these developments, aware that currency fluctuations and technological advancements can significantly impact earnings and market dynamics. These stories, from the high-stakes diplomacy of German-Chinese relations to the legal intricacies of a trade secrets dispute and the economic forecasts in Asia, paint a vivid picture of the global economic ecosystem. They reflect a world where nations and companies must constantly adapt to changing circumstances, balancing competition with cooperation and navigating the legal, technological, 
and financial challenges that define our times. As these narratives unfold, they offer a glimpse into the complexities of international trade and investment, reminding us of the interconnected nature of our global economy. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz's recent journey to China has stirred up a whirlwind of debate within the European Union, revealing deep-seated divisions on how to approach Beijing, especially concerning trade and Russia. Scholz's trip, characterized by a push for pragmatic economic ties that prioritize German business interests, stands in stark contrast to the European Union's more cautious stance. EU Competition Chief Margrethe Vestager highlighted the importance of assessing the trustworthiness of Chinese clean technology imports, hinting at a broader concern for security and fair competition. This divergence in approaches has sparked criticism, with some observers arguing that Scholz's softer rhetoric and focus on national interests over a united European strategy could undermine the EU's unity. His reluctance to fully endorse the EU's strategy on mitigating risks and tackling overcapacity issues further emphasizes the growing rift on how to balance economic interests with geopolitical realities. This episode underscores the complex dynamics at play as the EU grapples with its relationship with China, a crucial trading partner yet a contentious figure on the global stage. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.